Hi, this is Alex and in this video tutorial we'll be covering a topic that we've had many questions about. Knock detection. What it is, an overview of the main parameters and, most importantly, how to set it all up. In a very simple definition, NOC is the abnormal combustion of the fuel-air mixture and, as an effect, can severely damage your engine. The purpose of this video is to get an overview of the various entities and settings and a quick guide on how to set it all up. If, at the end of this video, you still have questions about this topic or any other that concerns our products, feel free to open a support ticket using the link in the description. Ok, so now we have our virtual engine started on the bench and we start with an overview of the main items that relate to the NOC module. As you can see, we are in the NOC tab of the default layout. At the top, we have a few generic data readouts, useful for providing real-time information on the engine state. Over to the left, there's the NOC settings window, which houses the main configuration parameters of the module. On its right, it's the main status field, the NOC sensor reading, as processed from the sensor itself, and the relative readings which take into account engine noise. Moving on to the tables, this is the injection knock trim, which is a fuel multiplier that can add fuel when knock events are registered. To its right, we can see the knock acceptable value table, which defines the acceptable noise level depending on RPM. As the engine moves across the rev range, the knock reading will increase as well, and this table allows us to correctly take that into account. It specifically compares the knock reading raw to the value defined in the table for that particular RPM and, if greater, it will determine that knock events are present and activate the control strategies defined. On top of it, we have the knock coolant scale, which is a multiplier that modifies the acceptable knock value from the table below in order to cater for the extra noise produced by a cold engine. With a quick overview out of the way, let's get this all set up. We first have to enable the module and define the RPM range. The default values are quite conservative. A good sensor position should allow you to go all the way up to the RPM limit. Please see our manual for explanation on what the optimal sensor position is. The next four settings define how the system should react to knock, as well as the recovery steps. You can leave them to the default values for now. We then have to move over to the window settings. These two showcase just how advanced the EMIT platform is in terms of detecting knock. Compared to older systems, which listen for knock for the entire engine cycle, our issues define windows around the ignition events and only take into account those readings. That makes for a much more accurate system as it essentially ignores all engine noise when there's no chance of detonation. The other two interesting configuration parameters are gain and bandpass frequency. We'll start with the latter. Each engine, depending on the bore size, will have a different frequency at which knock is likely to happen. There are plenty of online calculators for determining this frequency for your particular engine. I'll link one in the description of the video below. Gain is an amplification of the signal coming from the knock sensor. A good rule of thumb is to set it such that the knock reading at idle is maximum 300. With all that out of the way, it's time for the last step of our setup process. Determine the base knock readings for your engine. Essentially, this means doing a logged run when no knock is present and then setting up the knock acceptable values table accordingly. As such, we first disable the module to ensure no false positive events. Then, we verify that the initial advanced table is set to conservative safe values. Ideally, a set of dead cans can be used to confirm there's no detonation present. Lastly, we enable logging and do a third or fourth gear pull all the way up to the RP upper RPM limit where you want knock active. So, we've done the run and it's time to look at the results. Locate the pool data inside the log and fill in the table using an interpolation line that's about 50 to 100 units above the actual reading during the run. In my case, I got about 150 at idle, so that would be 250, and 220 at the higher RPM limit, which would make it 320 here. 
that's it. With this table filled up, no control is fully set up and ready to run. All you have to do is enable it from this combo box here. As always, please exercise caution on doing your own tuning, as it only takes a few wrong turns to blow up an engine. We always recommend seeking the advice of a professional tuner when in doubt. Enjoy and see you soon!